Why Mullen Automotive Stock is doomed Mullen Automotive is a small company aiming to make waves in the electric vehicle EV market. The Mullen company came to the market through unfavorable beginnings. Unlike most EV companies that used special purpose acquisition companies to go public, Mullen used a reverse merger to float its shares on the Nasdaq. Historically, reverse mergers have a poor track record compared to traditional initial public offerings, and so far, the performance of the Mullen share price has followed this historical course. It went public on November the 5th, 2021, after merging with NetElement through a reverse merger. Mullen stock has had a tough time since this listing. After peaking, the stock dropped sharply, falling more than 80%. Most of this slump occurred in 2022 and at the start of 2023, with Mullen posting a loss of 48.4% year-to-date to $2.72 per share. Mullen's abrupt price correction is no surprise given its early stage of business. But why did Mullen stock suffer this loss? What factors contributed to its fall? In this video, we will have a look at why Mullen Automotive is doomed. Mullen announced several deals that seem impressive on the surface but are actually nothing special. On December the 15th, Mullen announced that it had received an order from Delpac Logistics for 600 of its electric vehicles, with a binding agreement for DPL to purchase up to 600 vans over the next 18 months. The agreement also stated that the first 300 vans could be delivered on request by DPL within a few days. On November the 30th, DPL acted as a logistics partner of Amazon, which served areas in Indiana. Each van would have a special purchase price of $35,000, meaning that the total order value of 600 vans would be $21 million. In addition, each van has a range of at least 200 miles with a maximum payload of 3,296 pounds. Silence on Mullen's delivery status has caused chairs to fall. CEO David Mitchery also hasn't posted any updates on his social media profiles, and as a result, investors are wondering why the deliveries have not yet been announced. It is still possible that DPL will receive vans from Mullen, as the agreement agreement provides for an 18-month time frame starting in July. This means that the delivery period for DPL ends in January 2024. An update from Mullen regarding the deal is urgently required because investors have been provided with no information so far. At the end of the third quarter, Mullen had only $54 million in discretionary cash available. That sounds like a lot, but it's actually a very low amount for a company that takes on the extremely expensive task of building electric vehicles. Although it has provided up to $340 million in convertible debentures and preferred stock financings from Isuza Holdings LLC, Acuities Capital LLC and a handful of other major investors, this is far from sufficient to support its car programs. Rival electric vehicle maker Rivian Automotive Incorporated has more than $13 billion in cash. In addition, Thomas Neal, another investor place columnist, reported in his January the 24th column that Mullen's share count grew from around $23.4 million to nearly $1.7 billion last year. According to reports, the automaker is now trying to sell even more shares of Mullen. The company's enormous reliance on using its stock to raise money causes a downward cycle. First, Mullen is selling additional shares, which reduces the value of its shares. As the value of its shares drops, it raises less money by selling each additional share at the next point it unloads shares to raise money. Consequently, it needs to sell even more shares in order to raise enough funds to stay afloat and then start the process all over again. For most of the last year and at the start of this year, Mullen Automotive stock was trading as if it was destined for bankruptcy. What has kept the stock afloat at various points is that management doesn't see it that way and continues to buy up the bankrupted assets of other competitors. Looking at the career of Mullen's CEO David Mitchery, he led five failed penny stock companies before Mullen. Two had their securities registrations revoked by the US Securities and Exchange Commission, two had their registrations terminated, and the last company merged with a speculative gold mining company. But apart from that, everything was above board. A company called EV Grid dismissed Mitchery's claim that it had found that the range of batteries developed by Mullen was nearly twice that of other leading EV companies and that they had charged faster than other batteries. In addition, early last year, Mitchery claimed that the company would start selling its amazing batteries in 18 to 24 months. However, despite the amount of media 
media coverage that the company has received concerning this issue, very little has been heard about these batteries over the course of the last six months. After Mitchery stated in March 2022 that Mullen would reveal the name of a Fortune 500 customer who ordered electric vehicles from the automaker, the company to this day has never disclosed the information. The market for Mullen Automotive is reaching critical mass. The company has so many irons on the fire, it will attract a large original equipment manufacturer or OEM to its warehouse, it says. Ford Motor's stake in Rivian paid off for the company last year, resulting in a special dividend of 5% for shareholders. In fact, this company and other OEMs, like General Motors Company, are watching the market for other candidates to help them cross the finish line. Other EV startups like QuantumScape, Arrival and Rivian have huge expenses and debt, but these companies have received investments from major companies such as UPS, Volkswagen and Amazon. Not only can these EV startups use the money that they've received from these huge investors to get their operations up and running, but also the investors can make it easier for the startups to get additional funding. In other words, the big investors with their many connections can convince other large companies to invest in the startups and to bring banks to grant them large loans. To convince banks, rather, to grant them large loans. Apparently, such large investors are missing from Mullen. Mullen is much more likely to run out of money soon, and in addition to uncertainty about battery technology, poor capitalization is another risk. The company lacks not only the deep pockets of mature automakers, but also other EV startups. It doesn't have billions of dry powder to put in as an EV newcomer like Lucid Group does. When issuing so many new shares, it's easy to lose track. A lot of the recent dilution is due to warrants exercised cashless by Mullen's backers for hundreds of millions of additional shares. While critical to understanding Mullen's growing stock count, lengthy discussions about warrants in financial records tend to put ordinary investors to sleep. Surprisingly, management can also lose track. According to its annual report, the company mistakenly issued nearly 1.7 million shares to key investors last year in connection with the exercise of its warrants. Potentially much worse than this, Mullen investors filed two lawsuits in December claiming that the company misrepresented the number of eligible shares at a key investor meeting last July, which would invalidate a vote to approve the subsequent issuance of more than 1 billion shares. Mullen says the shareholder lawsuits are unfounded and is seeking confirmation of the accuracy of its capital structure. Mullen shareholders are expected to vote on whether to approve another 3.25 billion shares for future issuance as the company is close to the current cap of $1.75 billion. These general concerns were recently cemented when well-known short-selling firm Hindenburg Research blew up Mullen, effectively saying the company was doomed to fail from the very beginning. Hindenburg pointed to various cases in which Mullen simply bought technology from China and renamed it. On the other hand, the short seller provided proof that there is not much going on in Mullen's production facility in Mississippi. Among other claims, Hindenburg claimed that some of Mullen's early vehicle orders were of dubious quality and that photos of his manufacturing tools came from stock photo services. Mullen's shares have fallen more than 80% over the past year and are currently valued at around $465 million in total. The more the company collapses, the more shares it has to issue in order to keep the lights running. So what's the bottom line? It's simply impossible to own Mullen shares at the moment. It would likely cost billions of dollars to realize all of Mullen's potential business ventures. In this environment of so much skepticism and pessimism, it's hard to imagine how Mullen can finance its future plans without painful dilution. Mullen stock receives a D rating in portfolio grader. Investors are no longer buying shares associated with the trend towards electrification of vehicles. The market has become far more selective, and because of this, despite the flood of seemingly positive news from the company, this subpar game recently has dropped in price. Sure, the company could refute the skeptics, it could well come out with superior EV battery technology. Even then, this may not be enough to move it back into the right direction. Further dilution of shares seems very likely as the mass production of vehicles is highly capital intensive. Anyhow, let's wish the company a speedy recovery. That's all for today's video, and thanks for watching it. Before you leave, be sure to subscribe to my channel and to turn on the notification bell so that you never miss any updates. Until next time, take care and stay tuned.